Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me for another one. Okay, this one, Gran Turismo Sport, FIA Races, Manufacturer Series, Group 4 at Tokyo Expressway. Right, this one had a pretty bad reputation for, well, just being absolutely awful on penalties. Absolutely ridiculous penalties being thrown out left, right and centre. The stewards were clearly high on something during this event. Now, it's first race. Um, I'm coming up to the line to set my main qualifying lap and boom. I ran out of time by about half a second, so I didn't actually get the time to set another lap. So, starting in 18th for this first one, made myself look like a right idiot by missing that one. Half a second though, if I had just been half a second sooner, I would have looked like an absolute genius. But sadly, fine, modes, fine margins of motorsport. Now here, I was focused on the guys ahead, what was going on there with the McLaren, but there we go, dished out our first five second penalty. Uh, apparently there was someone on our inside and I just squeezed them against the wall inadvertently. Okay, serving the penalty and that is very painful. In fact, it's worse than childbirth. Can confirm 100%. Down to 20th place and this is what was the final straw. Going through the chicane, the random chicane which your car bounced through randomly. Get yourself a half a second penalty and whoa. Okay, gonna completely ignore my advice from a week ago which was to continue the race. But I was so infuriated by this stupid place that I could not stand to look at it any longer. Not least until I went back an hour and 20 minutes later and had another go. Here we go again. Qualified 60 this time. Uh, not great. Probably should have done a bit better than that. But anyway, here we go. Across the line to begin 17 laps. Now, the strategy here was quite a weird one. So I've gone for medium tyres. Now for this race, there are two compounds that you have to use, medium and hard. And I think the typically accepted strategy was to go medium tyres on the front and hard on the rear, which you can do at the start of the race. So you can put on two different compounds and then you just don't even have to bother pitting at all because you've, uh, because you've used both of the compounds. So that was one of the strategies, and I think that's the main strategy that most people are going for. I've gone for the medium tyres. So I'm going to have to be quite aggressive here, because I am going to have to make a pit stop at some point and go onto the hard tyres. I need to then fight through this pack as quickly as I can. It's quite a tough track to overtake on, in my experience. Um, it does have that hairpin, which is a very good place. You normally can send up the inside, it does open up. It's quite a wide hairpin. So there is that. But um, other than that, it's actually quite a difficult circuit to get past, especially if people are in a long slipstream train like, like we are here. The Aston Martin head going past the Aston, uh, going past the McLaren, sorry. They make contact and true to my motives here, I'm going to be very aggressive. I'm going to have to be aggressive. Going up the inside, normally I would kind of go for this kind of move, going in very narrow. But we go over the ramp that is the curve of the chicane. Lose control completely on the exit, but thankfully the guy behind just gives us a nice nudge and it's actually boosted me and given me a nice uh, load of propulsion back down this main straight. Uh, back into the slipstream of the Porsche just in front. So that actually really helped. And you see the gap now opening up to nearly one and a half seconds to the guys behind. Into the hairpin, breaking just before the 100 board. The Porsche ahead goes very deep, too deep in fact, and we're going to gain that position as well up to 13th. A very big group up ahead, very tasty looking group. You can see just how much it bunches up as we come into the chicane for the second time. Trying to be careful through there. It's really difficult that chicane. Now watch this, okay? The Jaguar and the Lamborghini, they make contact. I think, okay, what's going on here? Not too much. The Lamborghini kind of uh, forces way through, if anything. And then the Jaguar gets himself a nice big five second penalty. Honestly, rewatch that. I just can't work it out. I think the only thing might be they made a bit of contact, the Lamborghini hit the inside wall a tiny amount and that resulted in a penalty for the Jaguar. That's the only thing I can think of, but really absolutely ridiculous. And there's another penalty for the Jaguar, sorry, the Lamborghini up in ninth. 
couldn't quite see what happened to them, but this track was absolutely ridiculous for these penalties. You tap someone, and even if they graze the wall, like one atom of their car touches an atom of the wall at barely 90 degrees and doesn't even slow them down, you get a five second penalty. It was absolutely ridiculous. It was honestly crazy. So there goes that Lamborghini slowing down. We're into, into the top 10, and you see here, this aggressive strategy is actually working. We need it to work because we're going to have to go in for that pit stop at some point. And the pit lane is just on the left-hand side there. We're not going to do it yet because um, we've still got 12 laps left to go. In the slipstream now, so we've got a nice big group to try to get through. Lamborghini uh, going into the back of the Lamborghini there. We have about eight tenths of a gap to help Stark there in 11th place. Gaps at the front opening up slightly. My main concern really is just getting enough of a gap to those behind so that when I go for the pit uh, pit stop, that um, I don't come out too um, in too much traffic. Although I will have fresh tyres which will help. Now coming up here I make a catastrophic error, breaking a little bit too late. You can see the Lamborghini just grazes the wall and yes you guessed it, a five second penalty for that. And it's just really, really frustrating. It was completely my mistake, you know, I break too late. Definitely break way too late. Um, I think the main thing I did wrong was actually try to turn away from the, the Audi and that kind of extended my braking zone. And unfortunately, just went to the back of the Lamborghini and ex once again, experiencing pain worse than childbirth by slowing down, dropping all the way back here. And I've still got this pit stop left to do. I was in so much pain. Oh, somehow I ended up back at the main menu. Honestly, I'm really puzzled. I can't work out why that happened. I'm really, I'm really struggling to work out how I got back to the main menu. Sarcasm ended. Okay, third time lucky? Hopefully, hopefully. Okay, this is qualifying for this um, next race. Now, this guy who's already on pole, or, or at this point he is, cheekily wanted to wait for my slipstream. I tried to break his toe, but I couldn't quite get. I couldn't quite manage that. I am actually going to try to set a lap this time. I'm actually going to be able to cross the finish line, the start finish line, start my lap. Here we go then. Let's have a look at this. Let's see how it goes. Breaking just before, or sorry, just after the hundred board, and setting yourself as close to the wall as you can. Obviously, not hitting it. You don't want to give yourself a penalty. Not in qualifying, or you don't. Really, you don't want to give yourself a penalty at any time. But especially not qualifying, it really does ruin it, ruin everything. And something I will have to say now, apologies for some weird stuttering, or weird, um, basically the footage was a bit weird for this, it kept skipping and cutting. So if you notice that then, I don't know, the Elgato was messing up a little bit. But that's why. Okay, so a good hairpin, this bit's, I mean it's very curved, left, right, left, right, left, right, but it's flat out, so you can cut through that bit. Coming up towards this right-hander at the top of the hill, breaking just after the 100, pretty much about 75 metres before the corner, or towards the 50 actually, more like 60 metres before the corner. Hooking into that apex, and this is a difficult one. I felt like this corner is just so difficult to get right because it just almost bounces off there randomly at times. I'm watching top replays, and they really commit and use a lot of the curve, and I try to do the same, it's like the car just doesn't react in the same way really difficult to get that chicane dead right and get the car to bounce in a way you like it. But we crossed the line, it was second, goes down to third, two tenths away from pole position. I'm happy with that. After two rage quits it looks as though I've dropped down into a lower level lobby. But, okay, whatever. I'm, I'm okay with that. We can just try to have a good race and at least finally <laughs> get to the finish line we know the strategy now i've done two races well i say two races i've only really done half in total because i've rage quit twice too early but this time i've gone for the you see the bottom left of the screen medium tires on the front and hard on the back so i'm going to go for the no stop strategy now this is the thing i was trying to do in the previous race but i actually messed up my strategy here go for a very big lunge way too big a lunge i didn't really want to smack into the side of him so I'm going to let him go um, but I've inadvertently gone up into second as a result of that so we're going to tuck into second place follow the Lexus for now we do need to fuel save a little bit in this race not a huge amount but uh, the main thing here would be tyres 
that's going to be the thing that's going to really start to go off, especially in these longer FIA races. 17 laps around here. Uh, you're looking at well over 20 minutes of racing. So it's going to be a very tough race on the tyres, especially when you consider that you're using two different compounds on the car, so it makes the car very sort of weird to drive, and it takes a lot of getting used to. You have a lot more grip on the front, and then at the end of the race, your medium tyres will begin to wear out, so you have very little grip on the front, and more on the back, if anything. But we'll see how this one plays out. Just tuck into the slipstream for now. We've had a good, safe first lap, and normally you're always going to have um, a lot more luck when you're at the front of the pack. So when you're in the middle of the pack, things can really just go against you because there's so many cars doing silly things, trying to fight too hard. When you're at the front, it spaces out a little bit better and you can try to get away from the group. And that's kind of exactly what's happening here. So I'm okay with trying to work with uh, Limitless here to try to pull away. And no, this isn't JD Go, it's JD here, F1 2019 guy. This is a different... Well, it might be. He might be secretly playing Gran Turismo a lot, but I don't think it is him. Into the hairpin. He goes quite deep. And out of nowhere, an Aston Martin appears. I have to try to give him a bit of space. So I think myself and the Lexus maybe being a little bit too cautious into the hairpin. And as a result, the Aston Martin takes full advantage. I think maybe even just braked a little bit too late and just thought, OK, well, I'll just got the inside. Kind of what I did on the previous lap. I just braked a little bit too late by accident. And actually, it turned out to be OK. Okay, so we drop down to third. No worries, don't panic. Still got a long way to go. Still in touch with the top two, still in the slipstream. We do have someone right behind for company, but just stay in the race. Just stay in the race, don't make any silly mistakes. Aston Martin goes very deep there. Are we going to get the run here? I'm going to play it really safe. This is something you learn, I suppose. And then coming into the chicane, just back out. I could have gone in. I was side by side there. But, <laughs> you know learning from experience and the experience being the last two races which I ended up rage quitting sometimes it's best just to be a bit more cautious especially on a circuit like this where penalties are getting dished out left right and center and play nice and careful through here unfortunately on the receiving end of that uh, the guy just ran a little bit too wide into the wall I couldn't quite see it coming I had a good momentum and I just went to the back of him as he collided with the wall and lost speed and then I lose speed so I lose out massively as a result of that losing in position Luckily, I didn't get a penalty, to be fair, just for crashing into the wall. I was like, almost half expecting one. Okay, a little bit later, lap four now. So, again, still in a good position. Kind of a ruthless move there. Barging our way through. It's going to be tough to see if... I mean, I'd like to see a replay of that. Because he might have had a car with. Either way, though, it's a very strong move. Too strong, maybe. Lucky, I didn't get a penalty, though. Somehow, so obviously he must have been okay. The stewards did give me a five second, then well, do what the hell you like, apparently. Into the hairpin, into the back of the Lexus, but we get away with that. It's one of those races where it seems like it's chopping and changing, people are changing positions, the, the Aston Martin now into the lead, but as long as we stay in touch, then it's not really too much of a worry. And uh, through the chicane, just playing it nice and safely, you can see it here, I had, I had the run, and I just backed out early. Who's going to settle into the position, play it nice and careful, be safe. Be safe out there, guys, especially on Tokyo Expressway. This place is very, very dangerous. Next lap, lap six. Let's see how this one gets done. Aston Martin goes very wide, just nudges the Lexus into the wall. This time, more than enough momentum to easily go past. So we, we're going to take that opportunity this time around. And now up to second. So... That kind of just shows you those last couple of laps, I could have easily have gone for a move into that chicane, but that chicane is just so dangerous, it's just not worth taking the risk sometimes. And I waited and I waited and eventually I got my reward as uh, those two were fighting a little bit too much. And this is something I noticed, in this lower level lobby, people's racecraft was not quite as good. Um, I mean, I pulled off some sort of ambitious moves as well myself. Perhaps I'm in the right place, but... Um, you'll just see it throughout the course of this race and I just noticed it when you go when you race in a lower level split against lower rated players um, the quality of the judgments isn't always as good so you have to sort of adjust yourself to that and make sure you are aware of people's intentions sometimes it can be difficult and uh, this is something I've noticed um, it's very difficult sometimes to second guess what some drivers are doing in the higher splits it's actually quite easy 
and you, more, people drive more predictably, you can understand what they're doing. But in these uh, lobbies, it's actually quite hard to understand what people are doing sometimes. So you do have to kind of give a bit more leeway and space. He's got his indicators on there, so I'm guessing he's going to jump into the pit lane, which is on the left-hand side of the hairpin here. He goes very deep, so I'm guessing that is exactly what he's doing. And that is what he does. Yes, he does. He goes into the pit lane. So we inherit the lead of the race on lap 9. We, we don't need to go in for a pit stop. We're going to the end of this race on the same set of tyres from the start. We've got the medium tyres on, we've got the hard tyres on. We don't need to change the tyres. We've, we've satisfied the criteria of using both compounds. Don't have to worry about that. The Porsche behind just served a penalty there. So we've got a bit of respite for a while, but very quickly we got caught by the Portuguese guy in the NSX. And it was on the brakes where I was getting really significantly caught. As you can see on the radar, it just pops in to say hi on the brake zone, on the braking zone for turn number one. Through the chicane here, through there nicely, and then through this uh, corner here, he just he goes for the goes for the move when he kind of pries open a gap that wasn't quite there, but he's gone for it anyway. He's on that left hand side into the hairpin. I do have the inside. Is he going to go around the outside? I'm not sure that's quite possible. Got the inside line, park it on the apex, and away we go. So we keep the lead for now. So a bit of a close one, but we're still we're still in first place. And you see how just how close he is. Okay, we have how long six laps left to go after this one so it isn't over yet it really is not over we still have a way to go and the tires are only going to get worse and worse especially that front left you can see just how bad that is beginning to wear as it is a clockwise circuit more right handers than we have left not many lefts around here actually to be honest only really sort of some through the first sweeping chicanes and then um, in the chicane coming up but none are really that prolonged. And we also have the attention of a Ferrari up in third. So Ferrari having a good solid showing here. At least for now. Through the chicane. We've got it through there okay. No penalties as of yet in this race. No rage quits. No penalties. Both on zero. The counter is both on zero for, those, for both of those things. We're doing okay. Lap 13 now. And we have a Porsche for company just behind. 1.4 seconds behind. Uh, Johnny, who was the pole sitter, started on pole, and this is the situation by lap 14. I'm on very worn tyres, and I've got this Porsche coming at me now, and he's he's run my tail. He's on he's in the radar, which means he's well within a second, less than half a second in fact. Now this is going to be a very tough race from here to the end to try to keep the lead. I'm in a good position. I'm in a good position. I'm, I'm in first. That is a very good position, in fact. For those of you who are new to motorsport, first is the best position. A little known fact, uh, remember that. Now, a very good move around the outside. I'm not sure there's much I could have done. Maybe it could have been a bit later on the brakes. But again, it's very difficult to judge these things when your tyres are very worn. Very easy to say what you could have done in hindsight. But um, this is often why I make mistakes, you know, by pushing too hard, being too desperate to keep a position or to gain a position and then you get a penalty. And in this race, I've been a lot more careful, and it's paid off so far. So sometimes it is the right approach to take. Because here, we've got the slipstream again, and we go back past him into turn one. On lap 15, so three laps to go, including this one. We've reclaimed the lead. Okay, interesting. Are we going to be able to keep this from here to the end? It's going to be, it's going to be a very close one. It's going to be quite hard to defend into the hairpin. It's not the best place to have to defend, because then you're going to get a poor exit onto the back straight. We have a Citroen for company here. We're going to go through him. Thank God for ghosted back markers. Into the hairpin then, breaking well before the 100 this time. A little bit too deep, squirming through the apex, all over the marbles. On the exit, it's going to be a drag race between the two of us as we get out onto the straight then. I'm just going to keep the lead. So it's as you were a lap ago. I'm going to have to defend once again into the right-hander at the very end of this suite, of this sequence. Try to get my words out properly there. Okay, he's very, very close indeed. He's going for the left-hand side. He backs out at the last moment. Now, this is where things just slightly unravel, as I didn't quite go to the right-hand side early enough. He, he is just, he's got his nose alongside here, and I couldn't quite move over to the right, and he's got the inside line. I should have moved over to the right a lot earlier than what I did. Because by the time I did, his nose was already in, and I couldn't block him off because he was already there. 
Um, so that results in him going through. Can we repeat the previous lap? Because I managed to get back past him straight away. You see I get a good drive off of the chicane. Coming through the final corner then of lap 15. Two laps to go. Can we get in that slipstream? Retake him into turn one. As we get into that slipstream, you can see it's working. It's taking a little bit too long to activate though. I need DRS assistance, ideally. It's not quite going to be there. I mean, that's requiring a big, brave lunge to go for a move on worn tyres from that far back. And I think on this occasion, I'm going to go with the cautious approach. There's still room for an overtake though. As you come through this left-hander, the Porsche just has slightly superior grip. As I can't quite keep up at this point of the race. The Ferrari not known for its tyre saving skills, neither is Super GT to be honest. Uh, so it's kind of a match not made in heaven, or a match made in hell if you want to put it that way. Okay, we've got another opportunity now. We can tuck into the slipstream, ignore that Jaguar spinning out. Unfortunately it wasn't quite close enough. Coming down into the chicane for the penultimate time and you see here having a bit of trouble as we come through, squirming through the exit of the chicane. And we're going to get handed our first penalty and only penalty of this race. And that kind of sealed my fate. It was going to be a second. But coming up to the uh, line here, going to serve that 0.5. Uh, Doesn't sound like much. I had two and a half second gap over the Portuguese guy behind. But by serving that penalty, you lose a lot of momentum all, all the way down this straight. So the guy behind is going to be gaining more than half a second. In fact, he was two and a half seconds. Here. That gap is going to come down to about a second. It's going to be quite tough here because I'm on very worn tyres. The guy behind is on fresh tyres. So it's actually not the easiest thing here to try to stay ahead. It sounds like a big enough gap, one second, but on worn tyres anything can happen. Into the chicane for the final time. Squirming through on the entry. Don't get a penalty, just keep it within the limits. And I think we've done just enough. So it's going to be a second place and I was really thankful that I came back for a third race here because I didn't want to end on a sour note, those first two races which ended in disaster by stupid mistakes, stupid penalties and thankfully in this one we had a good race, we came home in less than 29 minutes just behind the Cayman in the first place. So ultimately a good race in the end and thankfully we came back and didn't end on a sour note. But that is all from me. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video as always. Do follow me on Instagram, Twitter if you want to see more Super GT. But I shall see you next time. Have a nice day, everyone. Goodbye.